Patty here at the Sheridan County Library with a new book called Too Much Slime by Francis Gilbert, illustrated by Vin Vogel. It wasn't really a knock on the door, more of a squelch or a thwack or a blurb. We shouldn't have opened it. But we did, which was not the smartest move. We were going to be in so much trouble. It was icky and sticky and sloppy and messy. It was stringy and stretchy and gloppy and gunky. It was slime, too much slime. Where could we hide it? In the bathtub? Too ducky. In the laundry basket? Too socky. Under our beds, too dust bunny -y. And then we heard it. Slurk, flap, squirch. It was coming from outside. Slime was oozing, creeping, skulking all the way down the street and all the way through town. Under cars, schluck. Over fences, wrap. Filling mailboxes, blorb. Flooding flower beds, plop. Soon it reached the school. The soccer coach blew her whistle, but the slime would not be sidelined. The crossing guard tried to stop it, but the slime had places to go. The music teacher blared a trumpet, but the slime wouldn't listen. The PTA held a meeting, but the slime had another agenda. The slime was taking over. So long, library. Nice knowing you, Jim. It's been real, science lab. Something had to be done. This called for action. The whole town pitched in. Football players scooped with their helmets. Flurk. Cooks, cooks used pots and pans. Slop. The marching band filled their tubas. Aruga floof. Dogs raced over with their bowls. Wolf. Construction workers dug a hole. Crunch splurge. Cats ran with, who are we kidding? The cats slept through it all. And little by little, the slime got littler and littler until there was just a tiny blob left, which we plopped, glurp, into a lunchbox. And brought home. Which was not the smartest move. Do you think anyone will notice? And that was too much slime.